I want to talk uh, today about almost the same thing I talked about in session because while I didn't really say anything different than the way I usually teach, there was a slant to it that seemed to be useful to a lot of people. And even if you've heard it before, it won't hurt you to hear it again. It's not really a talk for new people, but I still think if you listen, you'll get something out of it. It's, um, in a way, an overall view of the structure of what practice is. And the talks coming up in the next two, three weeks will also be about this, but probably about some aspect of it. Hmm. Let's start by saying that what we are basically, and I work with some of you this way, so you'll hear some of it, but I'm giving the talk to all of you so I don't have to say this how many times? You know? <laughs> it, uh, this is more efficient. Basically, let's assume whether it means anything to you or not that what we are is a true self. Now, a true self, genuine self, uh, having Buddha nature, whatever you want to call it, let's settle for the word true self, is not something mysterious. The true self is the same one that goes to the bank, who takes the kids to the beach, who works wherever he or she works. The true self is you, but in a way it's not you. So practice is always about returning to our true self. If it's complete and thorough enough, we can say a person's enlightened, though it's not a term we use here very much because people have such crazy ideas about what that means. <clears throat> when a baby is born in a baby way, a baby is a true self. A baby has no reservations about life yet. A baby is just an open, receptive container to whatever comes up next. When they cry when they cry, they do what they do, they're just open. A baby true self, now it's not the same as an adult true self, but the ing basic ingredient is the same. This absolutely open receptivity to life. <clears throat> now, no baby can go very far without meeting something that it will view as opposition. Um, Maybe it's just that mom has a hard day and she's cross. She may snap about something. Or a child can't go through the first year without meeting innumerable instances of things that are not the way it wants it to be. Um, so this keeps building and by the time a child is five, it has really lost its sense of itself as a true self. It's been punished enough, and I'm not implying the parents are doing anything but what good parents do. Nevertheless, it will have received enough uh, problems from life that has forgotten this absolutely open uh, receptivity. I mean, you can just take, you know, the classic example of a two-year-old who has a, a new baby appear on the scene. From the standpoint of the two-year-old, this is disaster because a two-year-old needs absolute love and security and when the new baby appears, of course, at least 50 to 75 percent of it is gone. <coughs> now when enough things like that happen, and this is inevitable, by the time we're five and probably going to about ten, we're in poor shape. See, no human being can live without this basic sense of love and security. We'd be insane if we didn't have at least some of it. So when the young child begins to lose the sense of itself, and the true self is, because it's boundless, it is total love, total security, total justice, total uh, compassion, total anything. Once some sense of that is gone, it has to be replaced. We can't live without it. We have to have those things. 
and now we're busy doing what people do. See, the child doesn't think about this particularly, but in its own way, it's replacing its own sense of just being complete love with feeling it has to get it somewhere. Now it has to find it out there somewhere. So it builds up its own personal system to get this. In addition, it builds up its own personal system to get security, uh, to get justice, to get a sense of its own worthiness. See, a true self is all these things. It doesn't have to go trying to get them. But every human being on the planet has gone through this, this losing the true self and then beginning to build its own personal versions of this. And what we build will vary from person to person because what we build is to replace what we think we lost. And one baby may lose more of something than another, though the two main areas seem to be love and security. But other people have good doses of others. Some people are very interested in life being just and fair, see? Um, there are probably 10, 20 characteristics that we might erect systems for. But our major systems are probably two or three. Now, how do we erect a system? And see, we have to have these. These are not just trivial playthings. This is a matter of life and death. Um, to the child that's erecting them. So, what we use is our mind to erect our system, you might say. Um, now, supposing you have a system that to get love and security, I have to be, uh, see, it'll vary from person to person. For one person, is I have to be absolutely perfect in everything I do. For another person, it might be is I have to be uh, pleasant, entertaining, uh, socially agreeable. For another person, it might be I have to control the whole thing. See, it, it'll depend on what the baby finds works, you see. Then you build up your system from there. So when we're 25, we're living out of the system that a, a baby thought up. It's kind of interesting when you think about it. But once these systems are in place, they become unconscious. We don't even know we're doing this. Now when we begin to sit and begin to label our thoughts, this is when you watch the systems going by. What you think you have to have, what did she think of me, uh, am I going to do it right, uh, is this going to work out? You can watch your systems being reviewed and, and turned around in your mind. We, if we label our thoughts for five years, there's not much about our systems we won't know. Nevertheless, we will live our life out of a system. If you've never done anything like sitting or something like this, you probably live your life out of two or three major systems and maybe five to fifteen minor ones. Now, this may go along pretty well. See? But since this is my own concoction, and life could care less about my, what I think of, uh, supposing my number is to be perfect, okay? to be flawless in what I do. The nice people have around, by the way, because if you ask me to do something, it'll be done right. See? There's nothing wrong with doing things right, I'm not saying that, but uh, the system isn't about doing things right for the sake of doing them right. It's for what? Survival. Survival. Security. See? There's a big difference between doing things right just to do them right, which is part of Zen training, and to do them right because I'm going to get something out of it. Now, if you're trying to do things perfectly, for instance, and somebody comes along and just severely criticizes what you've done, for whatever reason, it may be fair, it may be unfair. How do we feel? Crushed. Crushed. Mm -hmm. Okay, now, our systems, say you have a system to get security, it has innumerable little parts. You can call them like little pearls or little buttons. It isn't just one thing. 
It's all sorts of things that we've decided are what we need to do. See, this is our picture of how we have to be to survive or to get love or to get justice or to have some self-worth. Now, as I say, no system, since it's my own concoction, is going to survive. I may be, as some people do, as I may, I may be very bright, very entertaining, very charming. And sooner or later, somebody will look at you and, as though you're a damn fool. Okay? And again, we feel crushed. We may not show it, but we feel crushed. If we feel that all this is going to get us love, we may even get our hooks on someone, and then when he gets cross with us, we feel what? Crushed. Where did my perfect romance go? Now, when we get this kind of an approach to life, our mind, after a while, and after sitting, 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 and observing and experiencing, we begin to sense that what we need to be doing in life is not just putting our attention on what's going wrong. See? It isn't my mother's fault that I'm the way I am. I mean, we, we don't endlessly blame something. We get interested in what? Not what happened as much as what? Yeah, right. We get interested in the system itself, see. Now, I'm not saying that we don't take care of things. If somebody's doing something to us that's way out of line, we take care of that. I'm not saying that. But our total interest, instead of stewing and fussing about how my husband is, or how my child is, or how my friend is, or how I am, for that matter, it begins to switch from that a little bit back to well, how come when somebody calls me a damn fool that I get angry? See? Do you have to get angry? No. Your true self wouldn't get angry. See? My attention begins very slowly over time to switch from the thing that's interrupting my system back to the system itself. Now, I want to backtrack a little bit here. So far, I'm talking in very psychological terms. Now, the difference between therapy and what's sitting is that, and it depends on the kind of therapy, you know, there are innumerable kinds of therapy, but I'm talking of the more traditional types where if something goes wrong and your system gets jarred by someone or by something, therapy attempts to adjust the system to get you to see something about your husband so you'll treat him more di differently or um, maybe leave your husband or... The adjustment now is within the system and usually also we will try to do our system better. See. If I have been trying to be perfect and it hasn't worked, I will try to be more perfect. Now, all those things may produce some temporary benefits, but basically what you're doing is strengthening the system. Do you see what I mean? If somebody has interfered with my system, I want to make sure he never interferes again, so I'll be super nice to him or I'll handle him in some way. I'll even eliminate them if necessary. Because what I want is for my system to work. Now, with enough sitting, we begin, as I say, to shift the emphasis away from making the system work to doing what? Hmm? Changing the system. No, not changing the system. Not exactly, yeah. Observing the system and, by observing it, weakening it, see? So, when something happens in your life that's very unpleasant, if you've been sitting long enough, I'm not saying it's automatic, it takes a little work, but you begin to see, 
gosh, I hate this, but what's going on here, see? How come my system can be shaken like this? What's going on in the system? See? When you do that, the system itself begins to weaken. It has to weaken because you set it up with your mind, and when your mind is questioning and observing it all the time, it begins to lose its power over you. So the main thing that weakens a system, which is what practice is about, is the ability to observe, which increases from sitting. And there's in everyday life, there's a very practical thing we can do that weakens systems. What is it? Not yet, Cindy. You're a step ahead of me. Okay. We want to weaken the system. Well, experiencing will do it, but I want to get one other thing in there. We can go against the system. Which simply means usually doing that which you don't want to do. But you have to do it consciously and be able to see all the parts of yourself react mm -hmm. as the, uh, you know, it's, it's as though you simply don't want to face your mean uncle. So you face your mean uncle and then you feel what that's like for you. Or if there's something you absolutely don't want to do, like asking a question in the Zendo, you do it so you can experience that fear. See? Now, as our systems weaken, the whole purpose of weakening the system is what? To what? To lose attachment. Well, that's what a system is, is attachment. So very slowly the attachment will weaken as we do these two things. One is the careful observation and identification of the system, see? You have to know that every time somebody does that to me, I tighten up, I'm upset. See? You have to be very precise, so if you had to write an essay on it, you could. The second is to go against the system which sometimes is pretty hard to see how to do it, but many times we can see what that would be. I mean, it's not, uh, do you hate to speak first to people? Some people really hate to do that. They wait for other people to speak to that. You only have to wait till the Dharma talks over, go out in the patio and you'll see how you are about that. Are you willing to go up and speak to one of these new people? Or aren't you? See? Of course, we have good reasons. Oh, I have to get away early today. Um, we have to see what it is we don't want to do and then do it. Not just for the sake of doing it, but so we can feel in our body what that feels like. The whole aim of weakening systems is to plunge us back where? Hmm? Not yet. Not yet. Well, it'll be in the moment, but I want to get this as a... See, we're giving a very theoretical picture of practice here. The whole aim of weakening the systems is so that we can be where? All right, I'll say it. We want to return... For instance, let's, before I say it, let's go back to the baby who suddenly has a, a rival, okay? <coughs> For the baby, that's terror. I mean, his whole life foundation is being removed. You see what I mean? And it's inevitable terror. The parents are doing the best they can. It's inevitable. But once that terror begins, the baby begins to have a system to substitute for what he's lost. The system serves the function so the baby doesn't have to feel the terror anymore. In other words, the systems are protective devices. So we don't have to feel the original terror, which will just be a sensation in the body. Now what we want to do as we weaken the systems is to be plunged back into the original terror, mm -hmm. which sounds awful, but remember, it's just a sensation in the body. It's not going to kill you. It might be a tight neck or a tight tummy or uh, overall tension. In extreme cases, it can turn into nausea for brief periods, but it's not something that really threatens you. It's just a sensation. See, a baby can't know all this. 
So it builds systems, but we're not babies anymore. We can very well stand to go back to this place and just be there. See? And when you actually experience this original terror, which is held in your body like this somewhere, Paradoxically, once we really allow that to be what it is, the word allow is very important, it begins to untwine itself very slowly over time. Now when it fully untwines, guess what appears? Any idea? More of the true self. More of the true self, yeah. Now, some people call these little breakthroughs. It's really a, primarily a feeling of release. It feels wonderful. But remember, we've only taken a little chunk off that true self. Do you see what I mean? I mean, not off of it, but we've only worked with a little piece of the system, maybe. Do you see what I mean? So we may have two or three days of clarity. When you are a true self, it feels, you know, everything functions perfectly. And some people after session have two days, a week, two weeks when they're like that. But since, that's the problem with these breakthroughs we have, see? We haven't really dealt with all the systems that still exist and that we believe in, see? So, sooner or later, something's going to upset something and you have to just patiently just do the work and over the years you get used to this and as you do the work moving through this process a thousand times can't count it's just what practice is the true self begins to be present more it simply means that your life has a different quality to it uh, it's um, at its complete state the true self has no problems whatsoever. How can it, since it includes everything? It's certainly not worried about security. And it is love, so no problem there. It includes everything, so justice is no problem. Life has a flowing quality to it. Now, at first we just have maybe a minute when we see that. If we've been sitting longer, might be a couple days. But we keep doing this work, and overall, when you do this, you change as a person. You don't change into anything except what you always were. So the true self is always is there, but we're out of touch with who we really are. So you don't really gain anything, you just get back to yourself. But that's a momentous thing to do. And people who sit, it's usually pretty obvious, they just become a little kinder, a little more compassionate, a little less thrown by every little thing in their life. It just has a different flavor. And over years and years, it just gets stronger. If you die when you're 105, hopefully you're still practicing. You see what I mean? Because um, we all have little remnants of our systems. You can you can uh, see through most of it and still you have a little remnant here or there. So, when you begin to get this clear, you begin to see what your work as a student is. You begin to look at the next thing that upsets you, and of course you'll shake with it for a moment, but after that's over, you get real interested you see, in what's going on here, see? What's going on? See? Uh, I was telling somebody that I got a little piece of one of my remnants the other day. I Somebody came knocking on the door, the person I like, and uh, came in and visited for 15 minutes. Just fine. I enjoyed it. And of course, I'm pretty sensitive to this stuff. So when the person left, I could sense Faint unease. Right? I know how to fuss around with that stuff. And it dawned on me that 
there's a remaining shred of a security system there that I love to see people, but I like at least 10 minutes notice. I don't suddenly want them coming in like that. See, now that I've seen it, that won't bother me again. Do you see what I mean? But that's an instance of a very tiny little element in the system that got exposed. So anyway, we get interested in all these little mishaps that happen all day for every one of us. Uh, the person that just kind of looks at you like this today, and the person that criticizes you, the person who's late for an appointment. Um, you know, the things that bother us are just infinite. If it bothers us, if it bothers you, you can be sure of one thing. You've got a system in place. And then you get interested. See, this is interesting work. Okay? You need to get interested in the system. What we tend to get interested in, if we're not sophisticated, is what? The other person, the other person or could be an event, what happened, see, that hurt us. Because all of our interest goes on to this crummy person that did this, you see. They may be crummy, but that's not really the point of practice. The point is to switch back to the system. Now, this is not easy to do, see? Because when somebody hurts us, part of our system is to go into drama and excitement. And, see? This extends the system, by the way, makes it stronger. It takes a lot of sitting, a lot of work before you can do this to any degree, but I haven't met any, anyone yet who can't do it. I'm trying to think what I'm leaving out. Another thing about those systems is we set it up, for instance, there's like a positive side and a negative side to it. The positive side is, oh, I'm just going to be perfect, see. I'm looking at Denise, Denise here. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but a lot of you have this one. I have a little bit myself. Anyway. The point is, and then if we feel we failed or someone points out to us we failed, we go into the other side of our system. And what does that look like? Oh, I'm no good. I didn't try hard enough. It's hopeless anyway. Depression can come out of this if you're really good at it. You, know, you can make yourself depressed. So we have what we're trying to do, when our system gets challenged, unless we're really smart, we sink into the other side of our system, which is depression, isolating ourselves, uh, blaming everybody. Um, it depends on the system that's demolished, of course, what, we, what the other side of the system will be, see? I thought I had this man interested in me, and God, he's going out with somebody else crushed. Okay. And the other side of that system is, I'll never get love in my life. I'm so alone. It's just awful. I'm so miserable. Can't trust men anyway. Okay. See, that's the, that's the other side of the system. It's all the system. Okay. The ways we berate ourselves are just as much a part of the system as what looks like that endless endeavor. So, a Zen student's work, in my opinion, is to demolish your systems by observing them and by going against them. When you do that, since they no longer can protect you, this is going to feel awful, by the way, it'll throw you back where? Into the original suffering, which will be in your body. See, the systems are all in your mind, the original suffering is all in your body. And this is where you need to be. That's where you learn to rest. And if you truly rest there, it's not even unpleasant. It begins to just be kind of, there's a vague emptiness to it. It just kind of, and at some point, there's just a release. Now, we don't, do this kind of a practice to get a release. See, if you want to get a release, you're already back in your system. Excuse me. 
this is the tricky part of practice, to learn what it means to rest in that place without trying to be released in any way, just to let it be. And this is the, this sort of thing gets real subtle, and this is what we deal with in Dyson, because uh, the minute you hear a talk like this, you think, ha 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 ha, I'm going to do this, and then my life's going to feel good, see? That's the system. So, the systems become very subtle as we practice, and for that reason, harder to isolate. Um, But if you're upset, if you're depressed, if you're confused, you can be sure you have a system going. It's really simple. See, your true self doesn't understand what it means to be depressed. It doesn't know what it means to not like the whole world. That doesn't mean that you invite the thief to babysit for you, as I say, but you see things clearly. You're not a fool, but there's none of this struggle going on anymore. But there's going to be a lot of struggle until you establish that way of living. It's a struggle, it's at times unpleasant, um, because see, we all think practice should make us feel how? Good, see? It will, in time. And even in your first six months, there's a lot of things in practice that are so illuminating that, you know, we get pretty excited about it. But it's, the aim of practice is not to make you feel good. It's to return you to your true self. And that can take a little time. Okay, I'm trying to think of anything I left out of this. Maybe I should just ask for questions and that'll help. Anybody? Yeah, when I think when you get interested in a system that um, there's also a hope there that you're going to find out what, why you're doing it or something. Uh-huh. That's, what, uh-huh. you know, what That's I mean. another system, Lynn. <laughs> <laughs> like, why do you... Well, we notice that we always have a system of doing something. You know, it depends on what t- kind of a person you are. If you're very intellectual, part of the system of any intellectual is what, to understand everything. So that, you know, if you understand everything, you're going to be safe. That's on the Enneagram of five. That's mine. And it's useful if you use that ability well. But what you're talking about is just another system, see? So you get real, it's like another thought to be labeled. Yeah. Right. Um, okay, anybody else? Chris? Um, it seems like first when I I didn't say to get rid of it. I said to see it clearly and go against it. That's different. Go ahead. Yeah, and then at some point it seems like I kind of just allow it to be there. Yeah, eventually we'll see. But see, essentially the system is nothing. It's composed of thoughts. And it can be there or not be there if you see clearly what it is. Basically these systems are what our personality is. You see what I mean? another name for having systems is having a personality. Now, our personality doesn't change completely as we sit. It will be softer, it'll be more open, but as I said before, I could live to be 106, I don't think I'd ever be the life of the party. That's not my personality, you see. I'd rather sit in a corner and talk to somebody. But it's all seen clearly, so that's different than not seeing it. Do you see what I mean? Sure, there's nothing wrong with leaving these things in place as long as they're just things that you see and that don't run your life. See, a real system is something we're devoted to. We, We love them. And there's nothing that makes us more unhappy than to have somebody really, really threaten a system. See, if you're seeing the system the way you're seeing it, Chris, it's no longer a threat to you. It can be amusing, do you see what I mean? Oh, I think some of them, parts of my little systems that are kind of remnants hanging around are, are real funny. Okay? But they don't run me, there's a difference. Maybe something runs me, but the sort of thing you're talking about, no. Make sense? 
Yeah. When you serve your system closely tied in with another's, for over 40 years of marriage, and the other person died, <coughs> uh -huh. and the other person dies, then you're faced with, what is my system? Who am I? Uh huh. Right. Better get going. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, the marriage, a successful marriage, is often two systems that fit very well. Uh huh. They're still systems, and sometimes if one system leaves, because your system has depended on the other system, you feel not just desolate because you miss the other person, but because your own system is shaken. See. And it could be a wonderful time for you. Okay? I know. As I say, uh, the sort of work I'm talking about may not feel good, but there's an immensely freeing quality to it. And I know enough of you here who've been through that freeing uh, part of practice to know that you know what I'm talking about. But you're just contemplating practice, if I'm not mistaken, right? Yeah. Yeah. And if you truly practice, yes. If you really, really are willing to put in the work, in time you'll feel better. But the point is to get to know yourself, not to feel better. See, see we're really after the truth, not to feel better. What is the truth of myself? See? So your truth, you have to look at it. To some degree, your husband was part of that system Nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with systems. We simply want to see the truth of them. Okay? Well, you think about that a little bit. Yes. I wonder if uh, you might be able to uh, tell me something other than psychological aspects of what sitting can do for you in yeah. terms of answering questions about who am I uh -huh. ultimately mm -hmm. uh, right. and what my relationship is with the rest of the universe. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. Okay. Right. Let's put it this way. A lot of Zen training, mistakenly in my part, tries to aim for that initially. And you may have some little breakthroughs here and there. shows you something. But until this early work is done, or should I say 75% done, you won't know what to do with it anyway. You see what I mean? But once the true self is, say, who knows, 75% in place, which means, really, your life is going very well, then the true self begins to teach the true self. And then there are endless levels of knowledge, endless levels of knowledge. But they unfold naturally because you no longer are fighting yourself all the way. Do you see what I mean? And there still will be remnants of the old psychological systems. So it naturally happens. Well, a teacher is useful because there are many, many, this is where the more esoteric parts of things can show up, but to make those an aim is a waste of time anyway, and for another thing, you cannot do them when you're tied into your systems. There's no way. Not really. It's not something to worry about, which is why I really don't talk about very much. Once that true self is 75, 80 percent functioning, it's, since it is an embodiment of the uh, truth of the universe, you're not going to have much trouble seeing it, do you see what I mean? See, what the true self is, is just a personal embodiment of what the universe is. So once you are that, these questions are not difficult, do you see what I mean? But it's important to see that you have to go step by step by step by step. Otherwise, you can get flashes of something there. And if that flash is strong, and the personality is not yet strong, I mean, by that I mean the knowledge of the personality, it can be devastating. See? You can end up in a mental hospital, and that's no place to be. I mean, if you don't have to be. See, I've known people who've had been pushed into things like that when they're young and they've had tremendous difficulties for 10, 15, 20 years. This is not, we're not playing here with 
you know, you're talking about this basic power that runs the universe. You don't want to have a hunk of that until you can handle it. Do you see what I mean? We don't get into that kind of trouble here because practice is all going step by step by step according to what a person is actually like. You see? But I've, I've seen, and I get sometimes people like that. Sometimes it takes a year, two, three, four years to get that person so once again they're anchored. So we want to be careful. You don't let the three-year-old take your car out and go for a spin. I mean, it's, a, it's the same thing. You see what I mean? See, if you can be upset by something, you have work to do before you even think about things like that. I'm not saying if you're upset once every four months, we'll let it go. But most people are upset about every five minutes. They don't just have one system in place, they have how many? Fifteen or twenty of them. And they all have little points on them. Am I making sense? Yeah. Okay, anybody else? That's one of my pet peeves, by the way. Doing practice backwards. <laughs> Well, I hate to see practice done backwards because there's so much harm in that. Practicing step by step, there's nothing but benefit. So, yes? And, and is there uh, no age at which you begin? Well, I began when I was about 50, so... Well, see, at 50 is a nice age to begin. It's nice to begin, as some of my kids have, when they're 14 or 15. <coughs> but you know, when you're 14 or 15 or 20 or 25, you still think you're going to have life go your way. Do you see what I mean? By the time you're 50, you know better. <laughs> <laughs>